All right. Hey, everybody. Welcome um, to today's webinar. I am just going to pause here for a second while people start getting signed in. Um, so for those of you who are getting logged in, just bear with me while I while I saw for a second here. All right. I, OK, I see numbers going up now. Um, all right, well, we have something really fun planned today that I know we've all been excited about. And we have two of our instructors here who really need no introduction, probably for most of you. They've done classes with us for a long time, used to be on our Gardening Advisor television show. Um, I know many of you probably know David from his virtual plant clinics, Peg from her classes. Uh, so um, one of the things we hear from you all a lot, or I should say I hear from you all a lot, and I know Peg and David hear from you guys in the store, but we get a lot of questions about the supplies and the tools that, that they mention um, on their classes. So we thought we'll have a reunion, we'll get Peg and David together, and they can do a class about their favorite gardening tools and supplies uh, for the spring. So um, I'm looking forward to, to, to hearing from them, and this should be a very fun class. So uh, for those of you who don't know Peg and David, they work, both of them, primarily at our Fair Oaks store. David usually, I think, is at our virtual plant, or sorry, our plant clinic at the Maryfield location in Falls Church on Saturdays. Is that accurate, David? I start back there this Saturday. Saturday, yeah. okay. So that is accurate. As of this Saturday. Right. Okay. Yeah. I was like, I know you bounce back and forth a bit on the weekends. Um, so they can be found at our Fair Oaks store and David occasionally on set. Well, not occasionally, but on Saturdays at our Gallows Road store at Falls Church, the original location. So um, if you have any questions during this class, please type them into the Q&A box. And David and Peg will be taking questions a little bit later on. Um, if you have any issues, let me know. And we are recording today. If you need to jump off the call at any point, uh, we'll be sending that out tomorrow. Uh, so I think that about wraps it up. I want to give you guys plenty of time because I know y'all have lots to go over. So uh, Peg and David, it's a pleasure to have you guys both, both on the call at the same time. Yeah, fantastic, <laughs> Sally. I really appreciate you putting this guy. I know Peg and I. I think it's the first opportunity we've had to work together since our gardening advisor days. It may well be. And that was that was a fun time, you know. Yeah, I'm trying to give it was like 16, 17 years that I, I know yeah. you started even before I did well, that, but that we, we years, I, I think for the two of us. And 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 we worked together so much as I just said, I think we could finish each other's sentences. But we're talking about tools and we're talking about stuff today. Okay. And and each of us have our own favorite stuff. But I want to start by going out into the garden because we're going to be talking about stuff that we use in the garden. And the first thing you need is a hat. Okay. So I've got my hat. Now what have I been doing lately? Uh, I try to keep down the weeds the best that I can, but I've got them. Okay. And I have to go after them. Every gardener does. Yeah. It's so, not, just, okay. not just in your garden, Peggy. We all deal with Ooh. that. I've got the hat. I need some gloves. And my favorites, of course, and, and they're here at, I know, the, the Fair Oaks location because I insist. And right now we're waiting for a shipment to come in, although we still have some art fox gloves. Why do I like these? Because they, they, they really, I can feel everything with these gloves and they're flexible. And I think I picked up a size large when I needed a size medium. <laughs> but anyway, we do have these residing in a basket downstairs. Okay, not on the wall. And they are box gloves. Now, when I'm working with wet things, I like those inexpensive throwaways, you know, to pull over them because I don't like the feeling of the wet, but I still have that ability to feel okay now i've been weeding and i know i'm considerably a little older than david is you know so i need a little help when i get down on my knees i cannot be without this own one i don't know if you ever use one uh peggy i have recently started work like it's strange, you know, like things change over time, obviously. Gardens and, too. <laughs> yes, and people. And I now pretty much start the same thing. I think protecting yourself first and foremost, right. hat, gloves. And yes, I carry a kneeler with me. But I love this one particularly because it's 
very soft. But it's not only just soft, it's very lightweight. And they last a long time. I actually have two of them so that if I'm working where it's moist and it begins to feel a little moist, I swap it out. But this I can kind of ease and sometimes I kneel on it and sometimes I sit on it. But what have I been doing? What I'm getting rid of some of these winter weeds. I always teasingly said on the TV show, I'll take care of beauty. They will take care of the beast. He can take care of all of it. But it's the little weeds I'm going after is yeah, all the little bitter crest, the bitter crest. with the white flowers on yeah. it. Want to spit the seeds out if you don't get them while they're early. It's best to get them right now before they start spitting those seeds, okay? And there are a couple of others, but they're we, we call them winter weeds, right? Yes, exactly. Because like I said, everybody, the way the weather has been, they've just been flourishing really even through January and February this year. They are thick as can be in the house. And I've got this one section where I have got to get down on my knees or sit on this. And this, we're talking about some of our favorite tools today. This is a, a DeWitt a weeder. It's the old fashioned Cape Cod weeder, sort of modified a little bit. And, and I think there's a right and a left hand. Of course, I'm right-handed, so I picked this one up, okay? And so I have been, uh, and I do this for short periods of time so that it doesn't get overwhelming, number one. And I get on the kneeler, got my hat, got my gloves, and my Cape Cod weeder, which is a fantastic tool because I'm down low, the weeds are down low, they're not deep-rooted, they're not hard to get up, okay? And so I'm pulling, pulling to get the roots out. And I don't want to disturb everything around it because I've got a lot of larkspur coming through, a lot of hardy annuals or half hardy annuals. And I want to be careful of that. So I'm trying to get down. So that is what I'm doing right now. And that's the two I started with. Well, as soon as you get caught up, come over to my place and, and we'll <laughs> give this a try out. I'll observe and you can demonstrate. Right. Yeah. Okay. I'll do that because his place is considerably smaller than mine. Yeah. And mine can be a little overwhelming. Yeah. It is. So as, as we were kind of getting prepared for this class, um, and, and what I did is I brought some pictures in to show you of, you know, everybody where our gardening situations are a little different. Uh, as Peggy mentioned, you know, I'm in a a townhouse size garden is smaller, uh, so my situation is different, needs are different. Not just kick off my little story here with a couple of pictures. So at one time, uh, you know, because we all think about this, I'm sure you have thought about it when I said, hey, what's my must-have garden tools? And we want to hear from you later. We, we learn from each other, and we want to hear from what your must-have garden tour, tools are. But when Sally came to us and we were excited to have this opportunity, the very first thing that came to my mind was immediately I always said, well, if I had only had a, a very limited amount of time or money or space or whatever, probably I think my first thing that I would have on my list is what I call round shovel. Uh, you can see uh, that one's got sort of around the tip on it there. I think back to my very, very early first gardening classes that I took, and it's it's kind of a funny story because I, I actually I took gardening class when I was in high school. Uh, that's really? how I got my biology credits. I went to the adult education classes in gardening. Oh. Uh, our good friend Byron Waite Sr. was my, the uh, the instructor. And as he told me, the, the round point shovel, he's always think of that as a spoon. And these lessons just stuck in my life. That's for scooping. He said, so just like a spoon, like if you're eating your cereal or something, that round point shovel is just like scooping and digging dirt out uh, like you would. Right along with that, I say of equal value, but would be my second tool on the list is that spade or the square shovel, mm. which is really a cutting tool. It's not so much a digging tool, but think of this as like a, your knife that you would be using at the table where you use it for cutting edges into a garden bed, for cutting through roots if you're transplanting, you know, for, for cutting through um, the soil. So that's the round shovel and the square shovel. Before you leave that square shovel, let me tell you that we're using this right now in my garden because you remember, I have the long row of um, liriope as my borders and it's gotten really wide. 
and my granddaughter wants some of it. So guess what? We're going down the center. You're talking about cutting, going yeah. down the center and, and taking plugs. Yeah, absolutely. So, I mean, like we were talking a little bit about epimedium as a ground cover. I use this to edge along the beds of the epimedium and then the comes off the sides, gets propagated or shared. If you are like dividing those big clumps of ornamental grasses. Oh, um, yes. Now, yes. the one that I have there is it's a commercial grave. They call it King Spades. This and is it's like, wonderful. I yeah. have one too, even though I'm small. Yeah. And the shovel anything. itself weighs 30 pounds. So, yeah. so it's not. Well, it's so, going to go in the ground. Yeah. Exactly. If I jump on. But like I said, that's safe it's for cutting, for dividing. And then the um the mattock, which is below that, was for me a must-have because again, if you're pulling rocks out of the ground, you're breaking through rock hard clay soil, that kind of thing, and you really need to get aggressive. That's it. Pulling stumps out, yeah. that kind of tool. And then a grading rake, which I'm going to use to smooth out and do my final grades yeah. in the garden beds. But we were really that what I was thinking about. So when I put this together, these tools sit in my basement and I rarely use them. Because you're in a townhouse now. And because I've been in that townhouse for 20 years, it's an established garden. So right. that's really the kind of the conversation I wanted to have today was not even about these, my favorite tools. Um, but I realized so when your situation when I was when I'm creating beds, when I'm starting a garden, when I'm getting initiated, this is the must-have tools. But the tools that I use day in, day out, week after week, my next picture here, um, this is what I carry in the back of my car with me. So I'm kind oh, of like wow. always okay. ready to go. And it's the same stuff that's on your list. I always <laughs> begin with putting on a pair of gloves and a hat. Right, okay. Because um, I think it's just so important. I look protect i take good care it, of my hands it matters my hands, yes um and myself first and foremost because the planting i'm doing is little small stuff it's flowers and perennials that trowel um that's in there has been like my go-to tool for 20 30 years now. and you've got but well, we'll come back to that we'll after come back then but we really want to elaborate on that particular two. Good. Yes, we do because this this one we found is made in Chicago. Um, it's stainless steel, all one piece. There's, You'll have it forever. <laughs> yeah. uh, so it's really the only thing can go wrong with this if you lose it, right. um, because and I like the way they come even with the edges sharpened. So, I mean, it will go into the soil easily. Right. Peg will show you a little bit later. There's a lot of different um, designs and options they have as far right. as the size goes. Just this particular one, that it, it, the grip is really comfortable for me. It's the right size for the gardening I do. I even, I think I do a little better job keeping up the weeds. So I'm able to use that for my weeding tool as okay. well as planting. Okay. I just use that um, to dig things out. And then I love having that little whisk rake that's my cleaning tool. I love that rake too, yes. Because uh, again, I'm not doing big areas and stuff. So everybody's situation is right. different. But but even if you're not doing a big area, we're all doing small areas periodically within that, you know. Right, and that for like reaching between, you know, under the shrubs right. and stuff, it's it's been just great. Like I, I can just carry it in the back of my uh, car with me and then the pruning tools. Mm -hmm. So I, I'm gonna give um, a quick little picture here, just sort of my part of my yard and my garden through the seasons, giving you an idea of how I actually put these to use. And we'll see that. So this is, uh, I took this picture probably two weeks ago. Uh, the witch hazel was in full bloom right there. It, it really came into peak bloom in February. Uh, with this wind we're having today, it pretty much is getting knocked bare as oh, of this man. morning. Oh, that's so. But one of the things I do is you see there, um, I leave the vegetation above ground through the winter time. Mm -hmm. Even though those perennials and that's um, things, see things like Amsonia and Pestamen and uh, the, I was trying to, Sheffield pink chrysanthemum right. and stuff that's in there. That's all basically withered, you know, with the freezing weather through the winter time. But I leave those stems in place because it provides a habitat for insects uh, to live within those stems as they overwinter and pupate in there. It's primarily for the insects, but I think it also provides a little shelter, you know, for maybe small wildlife. 
I might mention last year, I found a little salamander in my yard, which is like the most exciting thing that's <laughs> happened in my, this little garden for a long time. Um, I leave it in there over the winter time, provide for the insects and what little wildlife might be there. Birds may be going after the seed heads. And then what I'm experimenting with, um, just this week I go in and I use those shears, the little yeah. small lightweight shears. And I use that for cutting back these perennials and I have cut them back now, but I just let all the material fall to the ground. It's called chop and drop. I'm, that's my experiment this year, just letting that debris fall to the ground. It's gonna be my mulch layer and it's gonna be there to help provide hopefully a, a good habitat uh, for the insects and animals that might choose to spend some time there in my garden. So that's where we are right now. My next picture shows me sort of popping up again the, in late spring, uh, same part of the garden, you'll see the same thing. Uh, I like to slightly trim back, like the Amsonia in there will get so big, it just kind of overwhelms the garden area. So I trim it back by about a third, and I tend to do this kind of late May or June. And I use, again, those lightweight shears. You can see, just give it a haircut on the Amsonia. There's some sedum in the background, I do that. I uh, use my hand pruners for like the uh, flocks, the summer flocks, because I don't want that as uniform. So mm -hmm. I cut that back at sort of different varying heights. Uh, and then I'll show you pictures sort of um, by summer uh, when everything sort of is coming into bloom. So again, the same tools like we're talking about that I use there year round. And I do this kind of on the maintenance grooming kind of a thing. And you know, while you're talking about that and you're looking at the Amsonia and you're looking at the flocks. Um, I have in my hand Joyce Chin scissors, which has got to be one of my all-time favorite. And I have to have one, a pair in the kitchen, a pair in the car, and a pair in the, in the uh, two bag, you know. But you have Felco pruners over there. And whereas you are using the shears, I have a greater tendency to reach for the Joyce Chin's or to reach for the Felcos. And because I'm, I'm probably not going to cut my Amsonia as consistently as you have, I'm likely to, to go the in and out, mm -hmm. what do you call cloud pruning? Right. Okay, so that it's not, you know, shaped exactly perfectly. And with the flocks, you can keep that plant in bloom for a long period of time. And that's usually where the Joyce Chin comes in handy with deadheading. I will go in and remove just below the, the bloom that's looking tired and take it away. And that keeps that flux going and blooming. I, you know, I realize this is just dangerous hanging out with you because, you know, the problem is I have Joyce Chen's. I couldn't live without them, but they're in my kitchen cupboard. So the only way out of this is for me to buy another pair. I think you better do I, that. I, I agree with you. The only reason I'm using my Felco pruners is because there are my little tool bag and my Joyce Chan's are in the scissors. So. No, I've been See, she, she just, she's, that's what happens. You hang out with and you end up buying stuff. <laughs> that, that's, because that's the only way I'm going to get, because I agree with everything you're saying, but that's, okay. I'll have to adapt. All right. Well, you need to adapt or I'll, I'll loan you a pair. How about that? All right. So <laughs> next I got, um, Peggy, I'm going to give you a turn here to talk a little bit about oh, some of your favorite tools. Oh, well, oh, absolutely. Um, here again, those of you who've watched my Zooms, those who've come to my seminars, and, and actually over all the years, this didn't just start with Clara, okay? This started with my own children, getting them out into the garden, and then my grandchildren, getting them into the garden, and now I'm blessed with these great-grandchildren, and particularly at this point, Clara, Lydia is learning, but she's two and a half, well, soon three. But uh, it's imperative that all of us, to the degree that we can, get the young people interested in nature, however you can do it. Uh, the one thing that I'd suggest you not do is set them to weeding. Give them something that's fun something that they're going to be excited about, okay? And in this particular case, Clara is actually using a tool that I cannot be without. It's a scoop. 
And I, I, it's wonderful because I do a lot of containers. I'm, I've been doing this for all these years. I trial plants in these containers, the trial combinations. I want to know how they're going to work. Um, these particular containers that, that she's working in right now, you can see how big that is. That's in my vegetable garden. Okay, and I'll grow tomatoes edged with lettuce. But what she's doing is adding the fertilizer, which is plantone. And, and if we get the chance, we'll talk about some of our favorite fertilizers too. So Clara is adding the fertilizer to this with a scoop, which is my absolute favorite. And in the next picture, you can see I have another grandchild that has joined us. And this is James Owen. And what he is doing, again, with another favorite too, is what I have called a lady's shovel. Okay, I just named it that a long time ago because I believe in that big shovel that uh, David was talking about. But this little shovel is wonderful. I don't till my soil anymore. I only work where I'm planting. And for most of the things that I'm planting, except their larger shrub, et cetera, um, I will use this small shovel. But what he, James Owen is doing right there and being my helper, and these kids are always open to helping, provided it's something they're interested in, okay? And he is loosening all the soil in that container. I'm reusing the soil that I used last year, but it needs to be loosened up all the way to the bottom and a third uh, of fresh soil put into that. And Clara is working with another tool that uh, David just showed you, but this is the longer handled version and I don't have that one with me here. So, yeah, I'll come back to us for a second, and uh, David, here you can give me a hand here. No, that's my lady. Oh, no, I won't do that. This is my lady shovel, and I have one of these too. I mean, because I I didn't bring it in with me, but uh, just as Peggy's saying, what I found is now with my garden more established, the the larger shovel is actually kind of cumbersome to use. I'm working right. in smaller spaces and smaller, but uh, if I'm moving perennials around or you know things at reasonable size like that um i have this at home too and we're getting a lot of use out of this and there's another Peggy thing. sold me on it yeah i did yeah. and you know and i'm glad that I, i'm i thank you for that I, i've been several, this made my life easier <laughs> several years ago david i recommended this to one of the crew chiefs and now i think most all the crew chiefs have one of these on the truck yeah you know and here again i talked about getting down on my knees. Well, you don't always have to get down on your knees. And I really use a hoe less now because things have changed. Uh, but but every now and then you need to pull a row or stand up in the weed. And, and a hoe is something. I was a farmer's daughter and you chop cotton with a hoe. Okay. But and I'd like to talk for just a minute about Maintenance of tools. I believe in keeping my tools sharp. And that involves having a good sharpening stone and doing it fairly regularly. You have no idea the difference, unless you do this, you have no idea the difference that if you sharpen this edge and do it periodically, that thing cuts so much better. And even, even the shovels. You mentioned something about the bigger shovel with the edge. Right. It makes a difference. You'd be surprised. And my father was a stickler for sharpening his tools. And my favorite tool to work with, because my mother was a gardener, and that's where I inherited a lot of this. He sharpened the hose so much that it was rounded. So you periodically have to do that. I am a believer in that. I want to take this, Danny, so that I don't clobber David. Yeah. Absolutely, like ditto on that. I do try to keep my tools as sharp as possible. It's like we're talking about these shovels. A lot of them, it's a cutting action, just like you have right. with that hoe. 
when I had a larger garden, I couldn't live without having a hoe and keeping it sharpened. Absolutely. And there, it's, um, I think it's sometimes a little easier said than done. Well, it is, and it takes a knack for being able to do that. And in lieu of me always doing it, I sort of cheat. A I, I, I'd probably do the same cheat. We, we're fortunate we have a, a full shop, a full, fully. Yeah, we have a maintenance full area. Staff, that garage shop. People take, take that thing down there yeah. and say, can you sharpen this tool for It's me? knowing the right people. Because that's <laughs> why I just say real quickly on that topic, like, these, I am not good at keeping stuff clean. Um, and you have to do that oil. You need a I, good oil on hand. Okay. You know, but again, even as beat up and used as these tools are, they are, believe it or not, that is sharp. I'd taken it down the garage and the guys had this uh, okay. clean and sharpened and all that. And then, you know, right. give it to me six months later, I'm back in this condition. But but, but it, it's, you can use a, a stone yeah, to do it. Exactly. Too. Makes okay. the job so much easier. So that's, that's some of my favorite things, okay. Well, the other, since we are talking about container gardens, I did want to um, go on and say a word or two about the soil oh, and the please. products that we like to use that. And then I'm gonna share some of my own experience with containers. Well, gardens. if we start with the container part, I do want to emphasize, number one, Maryville Garden Center does our own brand of, of potting soil and it is very good, okay. It drains very well. It has good components in it, and I highly recommend it. One thing it doesn't have is all the additives that are in what I'm about to show you. When I use the Maryfield potting soil, and I do, I add behind you, there's, while, while I'm talking, the, the additives that I put into the fertilizers. Is this a bad time to do that? No, okay. I think you were uh, okay. I use a Spoma products, and and there are a number of fertilizers down there. But I got hooked on these. Okay, I'm going to trial a couple of them. But this Spoma products are excellent. Okay, and they are organic. And a lot of people that are growing in containers, particularly herbs and vegetables, want to go all organic. So into that Maryfield potting soil. If you use this according to the size of your pot and the directions, you're fine. It's going to work really well. However, I got really hung up on, and there's some other products that are probably just as good, okay, and I've used those too, but I really got hung up on this um, Fox Farm. It's called Ocean and Forest, or Ocean Forest because it's got earthworm castings and it's got other things in it, but it also has one that has a lot of, well, it's primarily um, the earthworm castings. It's bacuano and- uh, Yeah, but that does have the shellfish. Uh, shellfish in it stuff. too. Yeah, it's got a fish on it, right. Mixed into the other products, okay. So I'm very fond of this. And into that big old container that we just showed you, I'll put a third of this new and work into it. So that's that's my fun one now. I know you've got one you like. Yeah. Also. And and as I said, I mean, there's no right or wrong way to do any of this. No. I, I just always no. say this is like cooking and everybody's got different recipes. Um, I have used the, the ocean like, forest and had very, very good success with it. Right. Of uh, the kind of recipe I'm going to say that I like to follow and, and I'll show you some pictures. I have proof. Um, <laughs> okay. I'll show you um, I'm a big fan of bumper crop. Right. Uh, See, we all have our it. differences and they're all very good products. And this is all sort of to the same idea, the same type of thinking that uh, like Peggy's talking about. I use this as an enhancement to the potting mix. So I, I literally, I use the Maryhill potting mix, one third pot or two thirds potting mix and one third I mix oh, bumper nice. crop into it. And when I look at the ingredients on here, again, it's similar to uh, what Peggy's saying, but this is worm casting, lobster and crab shells, cup meal, aged bark, dehydrated manure, sphagnum mm -hmm. moss, uh, compost cow manure, dolomitic lime, and mycorrhizae. So they're, they're organic. probably totally equal. Yeah. Except that the, the ocean forest is a potting mix. 
this is a soil okay. conditioner. Okay. It doesn't have quite the same drainage properties. So I use it to enhance poly mix. Excellent. I use it to enhance soil, but it's not something that I would use just straight out totally. of the bag in my okay. pots. Excellent. And I that's great. So we're we're looking at similar products used just yeah. a little differently. And I'm just gonna give you a chance on it because I know this is one of your favorites, Peg, and it might be the very best thing in the shelf, but I haven't used it. No, and, and I have used, haven't used the bumper crop very much either, but I do know they're very similar. So leaving the potting mixes, we're talking about potting mixes and planting mixes, and there's a difference, okay? Because the potting mixes drain better you're going to mix the other things into your existing soil. And I discovered this product from a customer that had used it and said, oh, I've never grown such beautiful vegetables. And so I used it a few times and now I love it. I'm sure that this mass, this is just as good. Okay. But I use other things too. Um, this is a lobster compost and it's produced by the coast of Maine another company but it's it's just got wonderful stuff in it natural all organic and i like that idea and and it's great but you know david I, and i came up with this one because this is well, leaf we, grow, could, and we both agree could, on this could without it you know leaf grow is incredible i have a larger area which i've had for many many years and david and i used to do a lot of filming in my garden, a uh, little short filming for the TV show. But I compost my leaves. I do it, it's a lazy way. I can't do it any other way, okay? So I do mounds of the leaves and I do mix some straw, not hay, straw as an aerator. And then I add my grass clippings and so forth and that's all that i put in it so it doesn't smell and it doesn't cook but if i manage to get it turned two or three times a year maybe it's ready to use in the fall in the late fall now there are a lot of people that that sift their compost or go through additional work i don't do that it's par it's partially broken down and then I'm going to use it as a mulch and it's going to continually break down and work its way into the soil. I'm a believer in that. Yeah, absolutely. And, and just uh, listening to you, I'm thinking back to prior to where I am now, I had a, a, big a 40 by 40 vegetable garden bed. And I wouldn't, you know, what I do, some of these products Peg you was showing you and I'm showing you that I live with now cost wise they would just not work for me it just wouldn't be practical based on the expense side now i'm in a small garden and the convenience and the pricing and everything works it's beautifully easy. for me <laughs> but when i'm working on a much larger garden yeah, um, a little different, then right? i was certainly doing my own what i call lazy man composting right. not sifting not screening no and using my own compost my own leaf or well, to kind of manage on expenses. So my point in all this is now I'm composting a little tumbler bin and I'm screening it. You know, yeah. and all this has to work. It's got to work for you and your and, situation. And yes. It's not like we're saying, here's the answer. No. You take this and you have to adapt it and work it to fit the size, the convenience, the weights, the price. And that's one of the reasons we have so many choices and it gets so confusing. It does get confusing. And, and we really try to have it not be confusing because... I can point to several of these and say, this is what you need to use. Yeah. And it works. Okay. It just happened at this at this moment, these are my favorite. Yeah. And and, and it's I, just a slight edge. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. And so you might it's get different recommendations edge. from us at different times and from <laughs> different people. And for people that might be new to gardening, that drives them crazy. But again, I just that's why I keep going back and say, Hey, this is like if I go and I ask six people how to make brownies and I get six different recipes and they're all delicious. Just have fun with this. We learn this stuff by experimenting. We learn from you. I mean, we trial and error right. this and goes on. 
But let me share just a couple pictures to sort Please, of finish yeah. up a little story yeah. I have about, again, my kind of experimentation, I will. It's like I said, hey, when I moved to smaller property and I, I'd never grown in pots and containers. Again, I'm fortunate I have Peggy here to coach me on it all. <laughs> uh, so I, I go from a 40 by 40 garden with rows of tomatoes into <laughs> an earth box. That's right. It with one tomato in it. Can you say, how many tomatoes last year? 80? Yeah. Well, so this this is my story. Yeah, the plant that I'm standing in this by right there. Uh, I'm, I'm by the way, I'm I'm like six foot four, and that plant's taller than me, and it produced a um, hundred tomatoes that summer. Wow, a hundred! I wow. Yeah. Now I didn't get to eat all those hundred. Squirrels <laughs> got theirs, and the wind knocked some of them off, have and to all that kind those of those stuff. Next right. Year. But what I'm growing in, and I have been really for the last. This will be year number eight. Is what's called an earth box. I'm a, well. I'm just going to no, go to pictures. Find it. Here, here, here. So earth box basically it's a self watering system, or I I should clarify, it has a little reservoir in there that holds some water in there, which is my biggest issue with container gardening. I'm not good at that. Um, always trying different products, different fertilizers, different soil mixes, trying different things. Well, this particular year. Um, I'm refreshing. I have the Maryfield potting mix that's in there. I'm not going to change all that potting mix out year to year. It's too expensive and it's still functional. It's good. So what I end up doing is I add that one third, but this was the year I added my one third bumper crop mm -hmm. in there and boom, best results I've ever had. <laughs> So I have to try that. Bumper it just <laughs> made a believer out of me. So this is in the summertime. My next picture is just showing you um, how much. So now I'm like this devoted bumper crop guy, and I, it's just two earth boxes. I wow. add the second one in there, using for fall vegetables that's in there. Uh, mm -hmm. Move in another picture here, and so I just keep using. This is um, like three pepper plants, and then here I just took a, I took just a, back, uh, you know, the little <laughs> package of um, marigold seeds, yeah. sprinkled it over top, and put three pepper plants in there. I got two harvests of. Peppers, peppers like that. That's just one of my harvests. Okay. And then I got a second one like that showing up a couple of weeks later. This just out small planters on the deck. I mix it in with the flower boxes uh, that we can see here. So I use, we just advance there and say, my, my point is, I basically use that same recipe it, now, whether I'm planting in the ground, if I'm planting flowers, if I'm planting vegetables, it's just been a winter for me. But I'm, you, you have me thinking, maybe I'll even try some that lobster compost <laughs> to see how we do that way. You need to do it. But real quick, I'm just going to show you this earth box. And this is just, again, one style containers works for me because Peggy, I cannot keep up the water and just not that responsible. Uh, but this is essentially the only thing I have, just a, it's a plastic container. This is what they call the junior. Um, the one I have is about it's three bigger, times larger yeah. than this size. But what I'm trying to show is there's a reservoir where I can put water in the bottom. It has this little platform that sits up there to support the soil. And then just by capillary action, like a sponge, it moves that water up into the soil. So with that larger size that I use, Maybe in the summer, I water once every three days instead of every day. Really? Yeah, you know, we still have to water. We still have to check out. But it's made life easier for me. And you continually add fertilizer to this. I do. Because and you're watering constantly. And we really need to emphasize that to all of you is you are watering containers consistently. And you are water washing the nutrients out. So you've got to replace those frequently. And I, well, what I call cheap, you know, some people, because it's not strictly organic, but I use even a water soluble fertilizer sometimes to get plants that, that big and quick. that productive oh. and quick. Yeah. Well, I use the plantain, but there there are liquid ones now that are also organic. Okay. Some of them are fish oriented and they're going to smell for just a little bit, but that goes away. Okay. Um, I know that we want to save um, some time for questions. Do I have time? Yes, to I was say if you want to show, I think a couple things that we might need to talk about for right now, gardening, okay. and then we've got 
Oh, picture. well, we want to do the picture first, or it's up to you. We'll we'll go out on the picture. Okay. It's, okay. it's your show. Patty. Okay, no, 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 no. I just want to talk no. about the weather right now. And I think we should. We need to talk okay. about what we're doing right um, now because we've had our weather has been so different. Well, maybe not. You know, weather's weather, and it's March for goodness' sakes. But we had eighty degrees two weeks ago. Well, I look January seven degrees above average february six degrees above average march i think we're still seeing but it's already running like four degrees below average yes so it's yeah we've changed it's, so much yeah it's so it brought it's, out it's, yeah, weather is weather yeah it brought it's out a lot of these things really early and and now they're suffering a, a little bit some not okay uh, i am very concerned uh, about some things i'm particularly concerned about my mop head hydrangeas because there are a lot of things that have gotten hardened since they've come out but some things don't and i know i'm gonna lose my little girl magnolia because it's just ready to pop if it gets to 27 again i'm gonna lose it i yeah. can't that customer's it. coming with camellias in full bloom yeah it's gonna be that's just the way it is and you have to accept it but you don't have to accept everything and I have gone out, and this is called a frost blanket, frost cloth, and the sun goes through it, and the rain goes through it, so you, you can put it on and leave it on for a while, however long you want to. You look like you've got a ghost in the garden, whatever. But how I do that right now in the garden with this particular thing is I use these sod pins. They're, they look like heavy duty hairpins, I guess. And I, and this is reusable by the way. I have used mine over and over again. So I staple this into the ground, go over the hydrangea, staple it on the other side. And I, it's so big, I probably have to do two rounds and then one this way. Now, it's going to be very windy out there the next couple of days. So when you do that, you've got to hook those two pieces together. And this is what I have found. Boy, it hooks them together, mm -hmm. and it's so good, and it doesn't tear them, and it's quick, and it's really easy to dismantle. That's when you're doing bushes, okay? Now, when I cover some of those... Uh, vegetables that we were planting and I did I cover that pot very loosely leave it loose tie a string around it so this is a marvelous thing you use it this now and then on the other end in the fall for frost yeah I'm glad you brought that I don't know if you noticed in my winter picture I just again I keep writing about how nice is that small garden I mean it's because it's much easier to deal with so I have one hydrangea is compact and variety. you've got it covered i just do this every year now because of the disappointment of having these these yeah, uh, late freezes and everything don't so want to do but it. yeah I'm, I'm a believer in doing that i mean some of these plants that's the only way i think we're really sure that you get to enjoy it right because we're talking about the hydrangea of you know the macrophyllas come out with big pink and blue flowers as that new growth is coming out those are your flower buds and, it will coming kill out too. That. and mm -hmm. then it's kind of disappointing your, okay. your plants are not going to die but no. it's but it's you'll lose that first but you blue. lose the enjoyment of it right absolutely and i don't want to do that <laughs> so it's covered it um was there anything before we no I, I, let's let's yeah, kind of wrap no. things up and we really want to hear from you so right. let's let's so let's let's just quickly it. show you this of, of the joys of gardening the, uh, if we can bring that picture up please. of the joys of gardening as i said you you i've been very lucky i've borrowed kids in the neighborhood to come over to teach let them pick the flowers that's the first step and teach them as i did this past sunday for the little one the the almost three-year-old lydia pick, oh that daffodil you've got to pick a longer stem so you're constantly teaching but when we go out in the garden from the time that little clara was just barely walking i didn't realize that i said let's go into the garden and would put my hands behind my back 
So now Clara thinks that when we go into the garden, that's the first thing we do. And I, I treasure that picture. The other picture is Eamon when he was two and a half. And he's working with that little lady shovel. He isn't weeding. He's turning soil. And that's fun. He's two and a half. <laughs> Okay. That's so nice. It's what I, I refer to as growing gardeners. And I think that's a lot of our mission is to to educate. Educate and and at, at really any point in life, but if we can get you when you're young, uh that's ideal. Yeah, and, and get them anytime you can. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. I catch kids. I'm I'm right across the street from elementary school. So my, oh. my thing is I catch kids now and then just as they're on their way to school. And I let them pick flowers to take to their teachers. I've even given some of them bulbs to right. take home and grow and stuff like that. So but see, that's that's you, you, encouraging. You plant that seed wherever you can. Yes, thank you, David, for doing that. Yes. Yeah. All right. Well, let's. Um, Sally, I think uh, Peggy and I've been talking enough. Let's turn back to yeah. you and see if we have any questions or comments. We we want to. We also we learn from you. So you tell us what works in your garden. Definitely. Yeah. So um, everybody feel free to send your questions in. We will get to as many of them as we can. Um, and I did send out a chat, but I just want to let everybody know we'll be circulating the recording and um, I'm going to try and get a list together of what we discussed. I have a list. I just need to get it a little fine tuned, I think, based on what we ask questions on. So we'll send that out as well because we're getting questions on that. Um, our first question is back to Peg, the kneeler that you showed at the beginning. Mm -hmm. What is the, what is that brand? Is that a specific kneeler brand? Well, this one is called Terra Terra Garden. Terra Garden. Terra Garden. Okay. T e r r a. Yeah, T e r T i e r r a. It's foam, but it's very soft and it's lightweight. Okay. But I, I, think I, I use a kneeler that's a, a firmer, stiffer type of foam. Okay. So again, this is what I'm saying. This is great. But hey, try them on when you're in the store. I mean, it's put it on the floor, kneel down, see what feels good. Personal you. preference, but that's what that one is. Okay, and I've used it for years. I, I've had two of them for several years. They're okay. long lasting. Yeah, so try out different ones and see which work best for you. Right. Um, Okay. Oh, okay. this is a good question. I have a designated pair of regular scissors for cutting and deadheading. Does that work? Or are the Joyce Chen's like way and above and beyond better? Well, of course, I think they're both. Hey, I, I, know, I know all of our team members carry the Joyce Chen's around. Yes, I mean, I, I don't have a lot to compare with because Peggy introduced me to these over 20 years ago. And I'm pretty good at holding on stuff, as you can tell. Yeah. I'm still using the same pair. Right. I've never even sharpened them. I've just, oh. I mean, they're, they're, they yeah, just, they're really, they're good. really, really good for me. I can say. Uh, and, and scissors are fine, but they're kind of cumbersome. These fit your hand quite well and you go, nip, 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 nip. We yeah, just got a comment back to the kneeler who said she wears the volleyball knee pads for her kneelers, which I think is clever. Well, um, a lot of people do, but I find them uncomfortable. Yeah, I've never found a kneeling pad that works for me, but I've always looked in like gardening supplies. I never even thought like a sporting goods store, maybe oh, no, that I'm would neither. have some <laughs> other choices. Yeah, know. go check go check sporting goods stores for some volleyball pads. Um, let's see. Okay, here's a question we've had from a few people. Can you guys discuss um sharpening i know y'all talked a little bit about it but is there a method or a particular brand of um like sharpening tool that you would use well let let me i'm just going to chime in on this on well i'm going to say coarse tools things like a hoe or a shovel or mm -hmm. um something like that you know i'll literally just take a, a file you know right. a metal yes. file to that mm -hmm. But if we're talking about like fine tools, pruning tools, uh, and everything like that, I personally, I don't do my own shopping, uh, my own sharpening. Okay. Uh, again, I, it's not a service that we provide, but it's just we happen to know some people that can help us out. Unless but my got... son does. My father taught my sons how to do yeah. this. 
and I and I just have sharpening stones. I couldn't stone, right. tell you what kind they are. And I don't think it matters. They're all very similar. Okay, so uh, a file, yes, for the bigger, heavier tools like the shovels. But when you get down to the smaller ones, you want a a, a less coarse yeah. thing. And it's really not that difficult. It's just the rhythm the right of angle. what you're doing and if you do it every now and then it's not a big deal okay okay no particular stone there are many of them out there yeah, like mower blades i would do on a grinding wheel if you have oh, that available to totally you that's totally different blade, that's but, a mower blade right. that's which yeah, so i used i used to do a lot of my own sharpening because when we had the business i mean we had grinding wheels and i'd have to sharpen my mower blades on there some right. tools but well, like I said, when you get down to the hand sharpening it, fine edge, no, you, you need a nice different. stone for yeah. that. Okay. Can you guys talk a little bit about um, leaf grow? Do How do you all use that? Is that like kind of an all-purpose, like the bumper crop, you add that to the soil or? It is. Where I go to that is, so leaf grow, phenomenal product. It's just organic matters. Leaves, grass clippings, branches has been composted down. So it doesn't have the nutrient enrichment like some of these other products like Peggy and I are showing you. It has worm castings and bat guano and manure. It's just a basic way of getting organic matter in the soil. It helps break it up, loosen it up. And it's probably the most competitively priced. So it's great. We're doing a recycled good, you know, recycling of locally produced waste product, locally distributed. It's kind of like my all-purpose thing, but like I said, it doesn't really enhance the nutrients. So if I'm doing things like vegetable gardening, uh, you know, roses, some of these plants that I might want to bump the nutrient value or go, you know, mm -hmm. invest more into it, that's sort of when I start going to some of these other specialty products. Absolutely, and I think there there certainly is some nutrient value to this because it's composted leaves beauty of it is it's it's recycled which I love that idea you know but but with the leaf grow even I don't have enough compost and what I use it for a great deal is almost as a mulch because I have stopped working my soil I have stopped yes. continually bringing up those weed seeds I and I've got a big property I deal with the plant that I'm planting or the seeds that I'm planting. If I'm planting a short row of seeds, I'm going to use that hoe to pull it. And, and if I feel like I need to break up that soil a bit, leaf grow is the way to go. And then I can add a small amount of the other and I'm ready to go. So I will add some of that to the soil if I'm in an area where I need to and feel like the clay needs that organic matter i'm going to add some of that and some of the other that is fertilizer also but i'm only going to deal with the area that i'm working in and i want to add too because 90 percent of the time when you talk to us what i which i'm going to be recommending we didn't even show us we custom blend products so our maryfield planting mix uh where we take composted bark some peat moss mushroom compost uh, nutrient supplement, organic nutrient supplement, some lot. We will blend that together into one bag. And 90% of the time, that's what I'm using. Because Peggy, I think if it's, like I said, if a lot of Oregon people have newer homes or the gardens aren't established, the soil has mm -hmm. not previously been enriched. Um, and we want to give the plant more optimized conditions. Mm -hmm. So that would be like more of a, when I say a premium kind of upgrade. So I love leaf grow, recommend it all the time. But the other gives but it even oftentimes, more. and when this is the stuff when people are asking, you come in the menu board, well, what's the difference? That's the difference. It's just different compositions, blends, mm -hmm. and really what your situation is. So when we're selling trees and shrubs and new installations, 90% of the time, I'm going to go with our Maryfield plant planting mix. mix because that's a bigger a bigger thing. Bigger bag yeah. and more enhanced. Well, enriched, yeah, right? and a bigger plant too. So there's there's different strokes for different folks <laughs> but yeah leaf grows good all-purpose thing yeah it is that's good it's often used as a mulch and if you don't like the looks of that you add uh, some mulch to the top of it 
Okay. All right, Peg, I think this is a question for you. Um, can you use the frost cloth like a coffee filter at the bottom of a pot? Uh, you can. Um, I'm sure it would work fine. I don't. What I use in the bottom of my pots all the time is the landscape fabric. And, and no, I don't use that as a mulch on the garden. When you do that, uh, it's difficult, okay? So I don't, I do newspapers for that. Yeah. But we here, I know it at the Fair Oaks location, cut one yard pieces of that landscape fabric so that it's doable for people that only want a little bit. And then I cut a piece that fits in the bottom of the pot. And, and then I reuse and reuse that. I know that it's going to last forever, you know. So I use the landscape fabric. Could you use this? Yes, you could. Okay. It's okay. just not as substantial as the other. You yeah. could use landscape fabric for frost cloth. No. No, you couldn't. Well, you could if you only were going to cover it for a day yeah, or two. short term, right. But the beauty of this is, now here's the difference. It's like fertilizers and how you use them. With this, it's thin. It only takes care of two or three degrees, okay? It's not going to, if it gets down to 15, maybe that's not going to help it much, you know? But it rarely does here, and the things aren't out then anyway. But this, the light goes through, and the moisture goes through. The landscape fabric would repel the so that's why you use this in lieu of that. Okay. We've had a few questions about edgers come in um, that I think go together. I just, I don't know a lot about edgers. I work, live in a condo, as you all know. But um, is there an easy, smallish edger on a pole to push or scrape along? When I use a shovel, I make an ugly mess. That's the first question. The second one is, what do you think of the half moon edgers? So I, I'll just share my opinions on that. Um, so the half the half moon measures. Let me back up a minute. So I'm I'm stuck on that word easy. Um, <laughs> I don't think easy fits into the conversation. Okay. Uh, in, in my opinion, but that's not a bad thing. I mean, to me, I hey, put some effort, a little work, and exercise is a good thing. Um, I love the half moon edgers. The reason I don't have one or I don't promote it is to me that's a single use tool. That tool is for edging and edging alone. Whereas what I use is my square shovel, that spade, because that has multiple uses. So I'd rather have a spade that I can get multi-use out. I know you're saying that you make kind of a mess out, but it's something you get good at with practice. Um <laughs> no you do yeah, I mean, no, I'm, you not, do. I'm, yeah. I'm not bragging, but I've had People tell me I'm an artist oh, wow. with a, with edging and a spade. No, but, I like but that's because that. I did it for I've done it for so many years. But it's but, it's a straight spade. Yeah, but you you can get curves and smooth curves, but oh, it doesn't yeah. come easily. It doesn't come in practice. Um, the edgers that you pull along or roll along that kind of works if you're up against a sidewalk or a driveway or a hard surface, but um, I'm, not, I'm not a fan of that, uh, certainly for cutting a garden edge um, and have, again, limited, I'm trying to, I don't have a lot of good things to say about because it it's it's so limited in its functionality and use. Okay. So I, I don't have a- <laughs> Perfect on your tools. I've never used one. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, of course, commercially, you know, there's power equipment, but that's a whole nother yeah. world. It's battery powered today, and I love it. <laughs> All right. I know we're running short on time. I'm sorry we haven't gotten to everybody's questions, but I have one person asked one that in my, well, this is vitally important, I know, for me and probably for other people, because I actually lose tools fairly frequently, um, which is terrible, especially given that I live in a condo, but um what do you put your small tools in when you're working in the garden so that you don't misplace them? That's a good good thing to ask. There are, and, and I don't have mine with me, but I have a little satchel that I can put all my tools in. Now, do I drag that around with me all through the garden? No, I don't, you know. 
when I told you that I put on my hat and I put on my gloves, I love these trugs because as I weeded, I threw the weeds into this jug so that I could get rid of it. I don't put those weeds in the compost pile ever. They they out go out with the trash or get. I don't put them into compost because I'd be putting seeds in there. Okay, and I usually will tuck my tools when I'm moving into the top of that. Yes, you absolutely do have to be careful. So just a small satchel that you could put them in or a bigger one. I do use those sometimes. Another shout out, of course, bright red handles. That helps a lot. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. That's when you're out there. I, I never buy something that's got like a earth tone or grass tone. No. I want well you see, look, right. we automatically right. picked red. So right? I, when I will lose tools, it's because I've dropped them down into yeah. ground cover or shrub and I'm not thinking about and then they kind of like disappear into the darkness so i rely a lot on colors yeah i'm gonna have to get red then because i've have green and i have and black and i've misplaced i have a pair of hand oh. and a pair of scissors i use and i live in a condo i mean i have a huge balcony but i keep losing them so i'll go for red the balcony oh dear yeah. <laughs> it's terrible i know it's a big balcony but it's still i mean it's so i do have a little bag that <laughs> okay. oh man all right well we are out of time so i want to encourage everybody um if you have any questions that you would like to get answered and follow up, you guys can reply to your confirmation email. That goes to me. Um, and I can forward your questions to David and Peg. Um, they're both at the Fair Oaks store during the week and they love having visitors. So please feel free to stop in and come see them. Uh, and we would be happy to get any of your questions answered. We will follow up about tomorrow around noon with your recording of this class and a list of the supplies that they discussed um, and a coupon. So that I think covers it for me. David and Peg, thank you guys so much. This was so fun. Do you guys have anything you want to conclude? It was fun for us too because oh, yeah. we haven't done this for a while. Yeah. yeah it was i i appreciate you pulling us together and, and again thanks everybody for joining us yes now i gotta put a little plug in i'll be here at virtual plant clinic on thursday at two o'clock uh -huh. uh, you're talking about lawn care uh which may not be everybody's kettle fish but um join in you might you might find that you actually enjoy it anyway oh they will yeah they will all right. Well, thank you so much, guys. It was so much fun getting the two of you together. I know I love working with you guys individually, but it's fun when we all get to get together. Um, have a great week, everybody. And we'll see some of you guys at David's class on Thursday. So bye, David and Peg and everybody else. Bye.